in the Egyptian delta, at the head of which the river Nile divides, there is a certain district which is called the district of size. To this city came Solon and was received there with great honor. He asked the priests who were most skillful in such matters about antiquity and made the discovery that neither he nor any other Hellene knew anything worth mentioning about the times of old. On one occasion, wishing to draw them on to speak of antiquity, he began to tell about the most ancient things in our part of the world, about Foreneus, who is called the first man, and about Niobe, and after the deluge of the survival of Deucalion and Pyrrha, and he traced the genealogy of their descendants, and reckoning up the dates, tried to compute how many years ago the events of which he was speaking happened. Thereupon one of the priests, who was of a very great age, said, O Solon, Solon, you Hellenes are but children, and there is never an old man who is a Hellene. Solon, hearing this, said, What do you mean? I mean to say, he replied, that in mind you are all young. There is no old opinion handed down among you by ancient tradition, nor any science which is hoary with age. And I will tell you the reason of this. There have been, and there will be again, many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. There is a story which even you have preserved, that once upon a time Phaethon, the son of Helios, having yoked the steeds in his father's chariot, because he was not able to drive them in the path of his father, burnt up all that was up on the earth, and was himself destroyed by a thunderbolt. Now this has the form of a myth, but really signifies a declination of the bodies moving around the earth and in the heavens, and a great conflagration of things upon the earth recurring at long intervals of time. When this happens, those who live upon the mountains and in dry and lofty places are more liable to destruction than those who dwell by rivers or on the seashore. And from this calamity, the Nile, who is our never-failing savior, saves and delivers us. When, on the other hand, the gods purge the earth with a deluge of water, among you herdsmen and shepherds on the mountains are the survivors, whereas those of you who live in cities are carried by the rivers into the sea. But in this country, neither at that time nor at any other, does the water come from above on the fields, having always a tendency to come up from below, for which reason the things preserved here are said to be the oldest. The fact is that wherever the extremity of winter frost or of summer sun does not prevent, the human race is always increasing at times and at other times diminishing in numbers. And whatever happened either in your country or in ours or in any other region of which we are informed, if any action which is noble or great or in any other way remarkable has taken place, all that has been written down of old and is preserved in our temples, whereas you and other nations are just being provided with letters and the other things which states require. And then, at the usual period, the stream from heaven descends like a pestilence, and leaves only those of you who are destitute of letters and education, and thus you have to begin all over again as children, and know nothing of what happened in ancient times, either among us or among yourselves. As for those genealogies of yours, which you have recounted to us so long, they are no better than the tales of children. For, in the first place, you remember one deluge only, whereas there were many of them. And in the next place, you do not know that there dwelt in your land the fairest and noblest race of men which ever lived, of whom you and your whole city are but a seed or remnant. And this was unknown to you because for many generations the survivors of that destruction died and made no sign. For there was a time, so long, before that great deluge of all, when the city which now is Athens was first in war, and was preeminent for the excellence of her laws, and is said to have performed the noblest deeds, and to have had the fairest constitution of any of which tradition tells, under the face of heaven. Solon marveled at this, and earnestly requested the priest to inform him, exactly and in order, about these former citizens. You are welcome to hear about them, Solon, said the priest, both for your own sake and for that of the city, and above all for the sake of the goddess who is the common patron and protector and educator of both our cities. She founded your city a thousand years before ours, 
receiving from the earth and Hephaestus the seed of your race, and then she founded ours, the constitution of which is set down in our sacred registers as eight thousand years old. As touching the citizens of nine thousand years ago, I will briefly inform you of their laws, and of the noblest of their actions, and the exact particulars of the whole, we will hereafter go through at our leisure in the sacred registers themselves. If you compare these very laws with your own, you will find that many of ours are the counterpart of yours, as they were in the olden time. In the first place there is the caste of priests, which is separated from all the others. Next there are the artificers, who exercise their several crafts by themselves, and without admixture of any other. And also there is the class of shepherds, and that of hunters, as well as that of husbandmen. And you will observe, too, that the warriors in Egypt are separated from all the other classes, and are commanded by the law only to engage in war. Moreover, the weapons with which they are equipped are shields and spears, and this the goddess taught first among you, and then in Asiatic countries, and we among the Asiatics first adopted. Then, as to wisdom, do you observe what care the law took from the very first? searching out and comprehending the whole order of things down to prophecy and medicine, the latter with a view to health. And out of these divine elements drawing what was needful for human life, and adding every sort of knowledge which was connected with them, all this order and arrangement the goddess first imparted to you when establishing your city. And she chose the spot of earth in which you were born, because she saw that the happy temperament of the seasons in that land would produce the wisest of men. Wherefore the goddess, who was a lover both of war and of wisdom, selected and first of all settled that spot which was the most likely to produce men likest herself. And there you dwelt, having such laws as these and still better ones, and excelled all mankind in all virtue as became the children and disciples of the gods. Many great and wonderful deeds are recorded of your state in our histories but one of them exceeds all the rest in greatness and valor, for these histories tell of a mighty power which was aggressing wantonly against the whole of Europe and Asia, and to which your city put an end. This power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean, for in those days the Atlantic was navigable, and there was an island situated in front of the Straits, which you call the Columns of Heracles. The island was larger than Libya and Asia put together, and was the way to other islands, and from the islands you might pass through the whole of the opposite continent, which surrounded the true ocean. For this sea, which is within the Straits of Heracles, is only a harbor, having a narrow entrance, but that other is a real sea, and the surrounding land may be most truly called a continent. Now in the island of Atlantis there was a great and wonderful empire, which had rule over the whole island and several others, as well as over parts of the continent. And besides these, they subjected the parts of Libya within the columns of Heracles as far as Egypt, and of Europe as far as Tyrrhenia. The vast power thus gathered into one, endeavored to subdue at one blow our country and yours, and the whole of the land which was within the straits. And then Solon, your country shone forth, in the excellence of her virtue and strength among all mankind for she was the first in courage and military skill, and was the leader of the Hellenes. And when the rest fell off from her, being compelled to stand alone, after having undergone the very extremity of danger, she defeated and triumphed over the invaders, and preserved from slavery those who were not yet subjected and freely liberated all the others who dwelt within the limits of Heracles. But afterward there occurred violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of rain all your warlike men in a body sunk into the earth, and the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared and was sunk beneath the sea. And that is the reason why the sea in those parts is impassable and impenetrable, because there is such a quantity of shallow mud in the way, and this was caused by the subsidence of the island. But in addition to the gods whom you have mentioned, I would specially invoke Nemozany, for all the important part of what I have to tell is dependent on her favor, and if I can recollect and recite enough of what was said by the priests, and brought hither by Solon, I doubt not that I shall satisfy the requirements of this theater. To that task, then, I will at once address myself. 
Let me begin by observing, first of all, that nine thousand was the sum of years which had elapsed since the war which was said to have taken place between all those who dwelt outside the pillars of Heracles and those who dwelt within them. This war I am now to describe. Of the combatants on the one side, the city of Athens was reported to have been the ruler and to have directed the contest. The combatants on the other side were led by the kings of the islands of Atlantis, which, as I was saying, once had an extent greater than that of Libya and Asia, and, when afterward sunk by an earthquake, became an impassable barrier of mud to voyagers sailing from hence to the ocean. The progress of the history will unfold the various tribes of barbarians and Hellenes, which then existed, as they successively appear on the scene. But I must begin by describing, first of all, the Athenians as they were in that day, and their enemies who fought with them, and I shall have to tell of the power and form of government of both of them. Let us give the precedence to Athens. Many great deluges have taken place during the nine thousand years, for that is the number of years which have elapsed since the time of which I am speaking, and in all the ages and changes of things, there has never been any settlement of the earth flowing down from the mountains, as in other places, which is worth speaking of. It has always been carried round in a circle, and disappeared in the depths below. The consequence is that, in comparison of what then was, there are remaining in small islets only the bones of the wasted body, as they may be called, all the richer and softer parts of the soil having fallen away, and the mere skeleton of the country being left. Plato, Timaeus Critias.